been following PK Karate over the past months, why, of course, you've seen this lady many times because she's at all of the matches. I'd like to introduce you right now to Judy Klein, Vice President of PKA. We've never had a chance to talk to you. No, that's true. I'm frequently seen waving from yes, the sidelines. Yes, I know it. We wanted to get you over here and talk to you for a moment or two. Especially about the, uh, the uh, activity that's going on in New York and the fact that uh, recently you had a tremendous card in New York. A lot of people turned out to see it. We did indeed. We had a sold-out evening at Madison Square Garden. It was fabulous and exciting, and a big crowd of people who were thrilled about the fights, and a terrific crowd of celebrity who, celebrities who helped make us feel it was a very special event. And of course, we talked to Paul Vizio a little bit earlier in uh, this evening's uh, and he uh, card, and he was there. Well, there's yeah, a tremendous right. amount of activity happening in this particular area now, with the Valley's fights regularly here in Atlantic City at Valley's Park Place, and a schedule of events at the Garden, and uh, some of our local promoters in the area will be doing a regular schedule of amateur fights, uh, culminating in a New York State championship validly for the first time in the history of the sport. So we're very pleased about that great number of things happening for the sport right well, now. Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask you about, Judy, the future. Where do you see, what direction is it going, and uh, are we building up more interest and so forth? Luckily, it's going the way we want it to, which is up all the time. I think uh, you see larger and larger audiences, more and more promotions, uh, higher and higher ratings. Obviously, our exposure on ESPN has been fabulous for us. I hear in a city in uh, the West Coast, on the West Coast, I'll hear people talking about East Coast fighters whom they have not ever seen fight in person, but whom they've developed a, uh, a feeling for via the ESPN shows, allows them to watch the talent, watch it grow in the sport. And uh, more and more people I hear, which thrills me, say, uh, I'm going to the fights, and they mean the karate fights. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. That's great. Well, I know you were excited about New York, and I, I know there's big plans. I hope again they're coming up shortly, maybe in the fall, another yes. big championship fight up there. Yes, we will start again in the fall at Madison Square Garden. Oh, that's great. We've been talking with Judy Quine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come back and visit with us again, all right? All right, let's continue now with our action as we go back up into the ring. And we're building, as you know, for our championship bout, which will be coming up in a few minutes here. Jeff Gripper against Irish Mike Brennan. So stay tuned for that. But right now, it's lightweight time. Five rounds of action in the lightweight division between Bill Van Cleef and Mitch Rossi. And we're ready to introduce the fighters here in just a moment as they're both in the ring and they're both loosening up. And you have a shot there in the black is Mitch Rossi. He is from... Athens, Ohio. He's 26 years of age, 5 foot 10, weighs 143 pounds. The referee there is Ray Martin, and now moving into the right-hand side of your picture there is Bill Van Cleef. He, he is 27, 5 foot 9, 145 pounds, and he is from Warrington, Pennsylvania. Bill Van Cleef has 17 wins. He's definitely the more experienced fighter. He's world-rated. He's uh, uh, also the Pennsylvania lightweight champion. Uh, Mitch Rossi is a relative newcomer he's had eight fights so he's not nearly as experienced but he looks to be a pretty tough opponent both fighters look to be in excellent condition okay this is a five round bout two minutes each they address each other the, the referee and here we go with action in round one in the blue is Van Cleef and the black is Rossi Rossi starts out looking pretty aggressive, throwing hard front leg roundhouse kicks. Van Cleef showing immediate respect. And Van Cleef comes back with pretty strong round kicks himself. Both fighters have to use roundhouse oh, kicks. Good right hand there by Rossi. Oh, another right hand by Rossi. Van Cleef was in trouble there for a moment. Looked like he was going to go down. Rossi landed two strong right hands. Rossi does look very powerful in both his kicking and his punching technique. Really digs in for that right hand. Rossi's kicks aren't fancy, but they definitely do hit hard. And Cleef seems to have it all back now. He was momentarily stunned with that right hand. Yes, I think he was surprised at Rossi's uh, quickness and his power. And now I think if Van Cleef can stay away, he may have better techniques. I agree with you. Van Cleef is the better kicking technician as far as... Oh, another right hand stuns Van Cleef. Rossi didn't come to stand around. He throws that right hand with authority. He's a counter puncher, as you can see. 
He's trying to counter punch off of Van Cleef's jab with the right hand, and Van Cleef doubled up that last time on the jab, which made a difference. Rossi tried a spinning back kick and ended up getting in a lot of trouble. Van Cleef seems to have control of the fight right now. Throws a good, strong left hook. Leads in with that left hook. There's the bell ending round one. What well, looks like could be a very good fight. This is five rounds between Bill Van Cleef and Mitch Rossi. That was an excellent first round by both fighters. Rossi over there started out in control, but then Van Cleef came back at the latter part of the round and scored the more telling blows at that part of the fight. So at this point, I'd say they're about even. Bill Van Cleef has a wide uh, gap in experience now with over 20 fights. Well, Rossi has only had eight. Rossi uh, doesn't, as we said earlier, he doesn't have the kicking technique that Van Cleef, he's not as flexible. Watch this right hand here, though, by Rossi. Right on the button. As we said, jab, he's coming over the top of that jab. He's letting him extend the jab, counter punching over with the right hand. It'll be interesting to see if Van Cleef's corner picks up on that and has him double up on the jab. He can eliminate that counter punch by doubling up with his front hand. First round kicking. Rossi had 10 kicks while Van Cleef had 14. Here we go with round two. Van Cleef in the blue, Rossi in the black. Let's see if Van Cleef's experience and knowledge will start to pay off here. Rossi has the punching powder, but I think Van Cleef has the experience. That's a slip. Well, Rossi is fairly limited. He throws that front leg roundhouse kick with a pretty good amount of power, and he's got the strong right hand. Beyond that, Van Cleef is... Uh, He's much more diverse in his attack. He can't stand there and let Rossi unload like that. His corner is telling uh, Van Cleef to double up, so they they have picked up on the counter like that. They're going to try to get him to use that front hand. There you saw a good left jab and a left hook off a left jab. Good double up with the front hand. That's what he's got to do, I think. That'll make it hard on uh, Rossi's ability to come back and counter punch like he did. Strong right leg, back leg round kicks. Rossi's a headhunter and he wants to land that big right. And he throws very few combinations. He definitely is wanting to hit with the right hand. Yes, he's trying to hit the one single shot, the knockout punch. There you see an interested spectator. Ray Martin gave Rossi a warning for low kicking. That's the trainer for Van Cleef, Bill Van Cleef, telling him what to do. His name is Lynn Lomas, and he's telling him to double up on the front hand. There he goes with the double jab. That's what he's got to be able to do. To stop that right hand. Ten seconds left in the second round. Good left, jab left left. Well, he was following his corner's instructions because they were telling him to double up, and a number of times during that round, Bill Van Cleef was able to do exactly that, double up. A good, good fighter uh, team. One is just as important as the other, really. If you listen, if you have a good corner and you listen to him and watch for what they're saying, it can make all the difference in the world. Many times a fighter has a hard time picking up on the things that he should be doing. The corner can sit over there and watch these things and make, make things work. You can hear the audio coming from the corners as we have the mics in there. We're coming up on round three. Building for our championship fight, which will be coming up later on between Jeff Gripper and Irish Mike Brennan for the United States. Rossi's coming out with that strong left leg, right hand. Van Cleef is in control just by a slight margin on my unofficial scorecard here. He's got a very slight lead by virtue of winning that second round. Right hand got through that time. 
Rossi in the black. Van Cleef in the blue. Van Cleef throws a nice light front leg like that. He's got good, good technique, good combination there. Reverse psychic followed up with a round. Here. This is the trainer for Mitch Rossi. You can see him shouting out instructions to his fighter. He's telling him to stay down on him. He doesn't want him to straighten up. When he straightens up is when he gets hit. That's when the left hook is effective. The thing that's difficult, though, is when, you, when you bend forward or when you stay low, then it makes it tough because you're luck, ducking into left leg, into front leg kicks. Looks like Rossi is a counter puncher. He'll take a shot to deliver one. Yeah, he stepped in then, dug in a right hand to the body. Right above our microphone here. Van Cleef working on his opponent, taking left and right, getting in a couple of front kicks. Rossi trying to fight back but really hasn't landed a good shot. Van Cleef is, looks to be in pretty good control, but Rossi looks awfully dangerous. As you can see he's ducking inside and coming over the top with the right hand. All right, here we go. This is an interesting fight, John. I think it, uh, it, uh, it's power against uh, somebody who has a little more finesse. I think that's exactly the case. Rossi is limited, Van Cleef uh, is not. Van Cleef's got good, good technique, and at this point, he's just got a little too much style, a little bit too much technique. It's not a difference of strength, certainly, or uh, aggressiveness. It's just that he's the better fighter on technique. Okay, we'll be coming up on round four of this five-rounder. There's a spinning kick by Van Cleef, and he follows it up by a front kick, but uh, Rossi covered up pretty well on that. In the second round, Rossi only had seven kicks. That's going to cost him a two-point penalty. He did not get his he eight did not kicks his, his kicking requirements, so uh, that puts a, him two points down. That's a shame. That hurts because I think the fight was pretty even. The fight was even. At this point, at this point uh, Van Cleef should have a pretty good lead by virtue of that penalty. Here we go with round four. Van Cleef in the blue, Rossi in the black. That, again, is just a mark of inexperience. Anytime a fighter misses the, the kicks, it's because they haven't been fighting enough to really understand that they can't get in the corner and swap punches. They've got to be kicking. Boy, Van Cleef doubled up there with a left jab and a right cross and landed both of them. Seemed to make Rossi take a step back, but then he came right back in. Good quick turn on that spinning back kick. Van Cleef throws that kick very well. He's got a lot more variety. Rossi's got a good right hand. Van Cleef has Rossi confused. When Rossi ducks down, Van Cleef kicks with the front leg. When Rossi stands up, Van Cleef hits him with the left hand. Van Cleef's a very classy looking fighter. He's excellent. He's picking Rossi apart right now. Yeah, he's, he's giving him a little boxing lesson right now. But I'd have to think that Rossi is still dangerous. If he could land that right, he could take Van Cleef out. Just takes one. Just takes one shot. Van Cleef were to get careless, get lazy, it could be over. 20 seconds left in the fourth round. One more round to go in this five round bout. Spinning back fist there by Van Cleef missed. I looked over in his corner, his trainer was saying, get closer. <laughs> Once again, doubling off the front hand. That's been very effective, mixing it up with the front leg. There's the bell ending round four. I gotta tell you the truth, John, I wasn't sure that we were gonna get this far in this fight with uh, these two fighters. I thought there might have been a knockout earlier, but. Well, both fighters are in excellent condition. That's the difference, I think. And when you see them come out really slinging hard leather in the first round, if either fighter is not in the top shape, top condition, then you can almost bet there's gonna be an early knockout. 
Comparing this to boxing as far as the kicking, inserting the kicking line, doesn't that take more out of you? You really have to be in shape. Oh, it kick. takes a tremendous amount of endurance. These, these fighters are outstanding, unbelievable athletes. They have to train so hard to, to get their legs to where they can go out there and kick. The good right hand by Van Cleef, there's the left-right combination that he used in that uh, fourth round with such success. But yeah, your legs are, are, are heavy. You've got a lot of muscle mass, and it takes a lot of energy to pick them up on the floor and throw them in there with speed and power. How do you have this fight so far? Well, I've got Van Cleef clearly out front by about four points, uh, considering that two points came on penalties. So, he's, so Rossi's going to need a knockout. He, in in my opinion, he'll have to stop him to win it. Well, let's see what happens here. Picking up the tempo here at the fifth and final round. Van Cleef in the blue, Rossi in the black. And they're going at it now. They both have plenty left. This should be a good action round. And Cleef leading his hands in with that good, strong front leg kicking. Rossi's just having a hard time with the front side of Van Cleef. The left hand and left leg have proved to be the difference. There's a jump, spinning back kick. Rossi moved away from it pretty well. Rossi just does not have the combinations. He's throwing one punch at a time or one kick at a time. Steps in just like that, wades in, throws a good strong right hand, but doesn't follow. Doesn't follow up. Lines up his front leg. His front leg is, is much more obvious than uh, Van Cleef's. It's an easier kick to, to avoid because of it being so obvious. Rossi's tough, though. He's, he's a fighter. He came here to fight. He hasn't backed up all night. Van Cleef knows, I think, that he's in control. All he's got to do is finish. And we're down to the last 25 seconds of the fight. the fight between Bill Van Cleef of Philadelphia, Mitch Rossi of Dayton, Ohio. And it was an enjoyable fight. It was a good fight. I thought Rossi, uh, having far less experience than Van Cleef, Rossi did a good job. If Rossi can uh, develop a little bit more variety in his technique, his kicking technique particularly, uh, he's going to be a real good lightweight. Yeah, he's, he's tough, he's strong, he throws that hard right hand. Van Cleef is world class. And he's getting a good round of applause from the fans here at Valley's Park Place Casino Hotel. Enjoying it, and we're building to our final two fights. Richard Jackson, the PKA East Coast champion, will be coming up next. And then we'll be going to our championship bout, which is Jeff Gripper against Irish Mike Brennan. U.S. welterweight championship bout. Final kicking totals in that last round, Mitch Rossi had his eight kicks while uh, Bill Van Cleef had 12. Van Cleef scored a total of 67 kicks during that five round. He uh, averaged almost 14 kicks a round. Rossi's was uh, cut short on the, in the third round. He only had the seven kicks, so that really hurt his scoring. Yeah, and I think uh, that even if he had got the kicks in, I think he probably would have lost the fight. Van Cleef uh, just had a little too much experience for him. Well, Van Cleef, I'm sure, respects him because he was tough and he kept coming the whole time and he felt that power. But yes, Van Cleef was the, the superior fighter. He definitely was uh, technically much, much farther advanced. Oh, and we're getting ready for the decision now. Let's go up to ring announcer Tony Mann for the decision. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Judge Fuchs scores the fight 49 47. Judge Macaron, 49. 46 and Judge Sankey 49 46 winner by unanimous decision Bill Van Cleef Van Cleef Bill Van Cleef is the winner picking up his 18th win 
and he's a happy winner. He was in trouble in the first round. Rossi caught him a couple times and stunned him, but then he settled down and fought his fight and came out the winner. That's the mark of an experienced fighter to come back after an early uh, bit of problem like that. It didn't take him long to to see what he had to be concerned with, make his adjustments, and go ahead and win the fight. Okay, we're going to move along here. When we come back, John Warley is going to be up in the ring with our next PKA self-defense tip. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 